Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm really excited to see people logging on. Um, if you're just joining us, let us know in the chat where you're joining from. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm so excited to start this night of science with you all. Um, also, as you join and you want to say hi in the chat, let me know what is your favorite color? I want to know everyone's favorite color tonight. So my name is Julia. I'm going to be your host for this evening. I work with Scientific Adventures for Girls. If you're not familiar with us, Scientific Adventures for Girls is a nonprofit working to close the gender gap in science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, we provide after-school STEM programming to girls and gender-expansive youth in grades kindergarten through sixth grade. Our goals are to increase positive attitudes towards science, technology, engineering, and math, and to provide hands-on learning opportunities for students and encourage lifelong learning of STEM subjects. So even though our after-school programs are for girls, tonight's event is for everyone. And I'm so excited to see you all joining and letting me know your favorite colors, some pink, some purples, some reds, loving it. So our partner and collaborator for tonight's event is Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory is one of 17 Department of Energy National Laboratories, and it's located right here in the East Bay. Researchers at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab are working hard to make discoveries that will change the world through fundamental science. They have 16 Nobel Prizes and 16 elements on the periodic table that they have discovered. So I want to give a big thank you to Lawrence Berkeley National Lab and to everybody here for being with us tonight. Before we get started, I have a couple of reminders for you all. Since this is a webinar, we can't see your faces or hear your voices, but we are super excited that you're here. Um, you can use the chat function in the webinar um, to chat with us panelists and the rest of the attendees. Um, so this event, like all of our Family Science Nights, is going to be posted on the Scientific Adventures for Girls YouTube channel over the next couple of days. So if you miss anything, or if you don't have materials tonight, you can still follow along um, and use the video later on to try some of these activities on another day. Um, and if you have questions for any of our guests, um, you can let us know in the chat. And um, Elisa from Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory will be here um, answering your questions in the chat. So please feel free to participate, ask questions. Um, that's a big part of science is asking questions. So don't be shy. Um, during tonight's event, um, we are going to be guiding the kids in the audience through some exciting demonstrations and hands-on science activities. Um, so if you didn't receive a pre-made supply kit tonight, we are going to post the materials that you will need for tonight's activities in the chat right now. Um, if you don't have the materials, that's okay too. Um, you can just watch the demos. There's going to be a lot of really cool demos tonight. Um, and you can always do it later on the YouTube channel. We're also going to be asking the adults in the audience to participate in three different polls throughout the event. So adults, please stick, in, uh, stick around and keep an eye out for a call to um, fill out those polls for us. If you did receive a uh, supplies kit in the mail for tonight's event, go ahead and grab it now and be ready with the supplies to follow along. Um, so this Learning with Light event is going to uh, uh, it's going to last about an hour. And at the end of the night, we're going to be raffling off some exciting prizes. But you have to be here at the end, um, at the time of the raffle, in order to win the prize. So make sure you stick around um, till 630. Um, 
All right, so we are going to send out the first poll to get us started. Adults, um, please help us fill out the poll for you and your household members. In the poll, you're going to answer a few questions. Um, and when you're finished, just press submit. Um, so just as a reminder, this is our first poll. We're going to have two more polls later on. Um, so while people are um, taking the polls, I, I'm curious, what is your favorite wavelength of light? If you don't know what your favorite wavelength of light is, then I will refer you back to the previous question, which is what is your favorite color? Somebody's favorite wavelength of light is 300. I think they mean 300 nanometers, which would be a little bit past violet, ultraviolet. Um, somebody else said their favorite wavelength of light is 700. I think 700 nanometers, which would be red. We've got a 610 nanometers. That would be like an orange color. Awesome. These are so fun. So thank you everyone for filling out the poll. Um, we're going to get tonight's event started by experimenting with some light. Um, but first, I want to talk about um, what is light? Does anybody know? What is light? Where does light come from? What is it made out of? What do we know about? Okay, someone says light is energy. Yeah. So one way to think about light is as an electromagnetic wave. And just like sound waves have different frequencies and that make different pitches, um, light waves have different frequencies or different wavelengths that make different colors. So here's an example of the relationship between frequency and wavelength. So if we have a short wavelength, that means we have a high frequency. We have a long wavelength, it's a low frequency. So for sound, that would mean a low pitch versus a high pitch. But for light, a low frequency or a long wavelength means uh, there's less energy carried by the wave. And it also affects whether or not we can see the wave or if we can see the wave, what color it is. So red is at the long wavelength end of the spectrum and purple is at the short wavelength end of the spectrum. So now that we are thinking about light as waves, I want you all to find your, um, find your STEM kits if you have them. And we're gonna use for our first activity, we're gonna use a laser. So if your laser is still in the package, you can open it up now. And we are also going to use this diffraction grating. So I want you guys all to find your laser and your diffraction grating. Somebody asked what wavelength is yellow? Yellow has a wavelength between 570 and 590 nanometers. So yes, there you go. Okay, so if you have your laser and your diffraction grating, we're gonna start with our first activity. So uh, the laser has two buttons on it. The top button turns the laser on. You guys see that little point of light? So the laser light is special because all of the waves that are coming out of the laser have a wavelength of exactly 650 nanometers. So what color is the laser? Did any, does everybody see what color it is? If it's 650 nanometers, it's a red laser. Okay, great. So that's the one button on our laser, it gives us this 650 nanometer red dot. And then we have another button on the laser that is a flashlight. 
This is more of like a regular kind of light. It has a bunch of different wavelengths all mixed together, which makes it look, what, what color does it kind of look like to you guys? The flashlight. It kind of looks white. Yeah. Or maybe bluish. Yeah. But it, so it's a bunch of different wavelengths all mixed together. And we're going to look, we're going to talk more about that in a moment. So the other thing you guys have for the first activity is this diffraction grating. And this diffraction grating has tiny etches in the little window that form a pattern like a grid. And these etches change the path of the light waves as they pass through this diffraction grating. So when the light goes through this window, the waves of light get shifted a little bit. And some of the waves add up to make an extra bright wave and other waves cancel each other out to make dark spots. So I want you guys to all try shining the laser pointer light through your diffraction grating. Um, and something else I wanted to mention is that these lasers are, um, you should be careful not to shine them in your eyes or in anyone else's eyes. Um, they're a powerful light source, so they can they can damage your eye if you shine it right in there. So don't point the laser at anyone's face. Okay, but you should point it through the, the diffraction grating. And I want you guys to all tell me, what do you see when you point it through the diffraction grating? I'm going to turn off this light so we can get a better. Do you guys all see this pattern when you shine your laser through the diffraction grating? Now, try rotating the diffraction grating as you shine the laser through. What happens? What happens to the, to the dots when you rotate the diffraction grating? Yeah, so the pattern turns when we turn our diffraction grating. And that's because the pattern is being made from the etches in this little plastic window. So when we change the orientation of the etches, we also change the way the laser light gets shifted by those etches. Um, and so we can use the pattern of the light spots that are, um, that are caused when we shine the laser through our diffraction grating to calculate how far apart the grooves in this diffraction grating are. So we can use the distance between the light spots to figure out the distance between the grooves on here because the grooves are what's causing those um, light spots to be created. Okay, so now what happens if we shine a flashlight onto the diffraction grating? So we use the bottom button to shine the flashlight on the diffraction grating, and what happens? What is, does anybody get any patterns? I'm not getting any patterns with my flashlight. Okay, and that is because that's partially because the light that's from that's in this flashlight it is less ordered than the light that's coming from the laser. So the light from the laser all has the same frequency and all of the waves are in phase together. But the light coming from the flashlight is much more chaotic, so we don't see the pattern when we shine it through the diffraction grating. But we can do something else. Oh yeah, some people see a shadow. That's true too. So you can see a shadow of the diffraction grating that's caused by the light reflecting back off of here. So you do see a shadow, but something else you can use the diffraction grating for, if you shine the flashlight onto uh, the wall or like a table or something and put it super close and you hold the diffraction grating up to your eye, I'm just gonna put it over the camera. What do you see? I'm gonna rotate, I'm rotating the diffraction grating now. 
Yeah, so you guys see your rainbows. So we, what we can see now are all the different wavelengths of light that were in the flashlight. And now all the different wavelengths are getting warped by the diffraction grating a little bit differently so that each wavelength has a different spot where it has the brightest, um, the brightest spot. And so we can see the whole rainbow of wavelengths that are all mixed together in that white light. You guys can also hold up this diffraction grating to your eye and look at other light sources that you have in your house. So you can look at a light bulb, you can look at the computer screen. Maybe if you have some holiday lights up, you can look at the holiday lights and see what they look like. Um, you guys can experiment with what kinds of spectrums of light you can find from all the different light sources in your house. Um, something else you can do instead of using this diffraction grating is you can try to find some materials around your house that also have really small grid-like patterns and see if you can shine the laser through them. So I have these fairy wings that I, I, I use for my Halloween costume. So I'm going to try shining the laser through the fairy wings and see what happens. So I get this pattern. It's, it's, not, as, um, it's not as ordered. So if we go back to our diffraction grading, this is nice and orderly pattern, very, very grid-like. But the fairy wings, they're not quite as ordered, but you can still see like a little bit of an X. Can you guys see that X pattern? And when I rotate the fairy wings, the X also rotates. And again, that's because these grids, they will change, they interfere with the waves of the light and they cause the waves to add up and subtract down in different areas so that you get these bright areas and dark areas as a pattern on the wall. Okay. So I encourage you guys to take a couple minutes to, to look around and try to find other things you can shine your laser through. What kind of patterns can you guys find? Um, and if you find a type of material that looks really cool, let us know in the chat. Um, or like, what else can you guys discover with this diffraction grading? There's all kinds of really cool things you can look at through here. Um, so feel free to take a minute, experiment. Don't shine the laser in people's faces. But other than that, go crazy. Um, I want to I want to hear about what kinds of what kinds of cool stuff you guys discover. Okay. Someone's got some magnet blocks. A glass cup looked red. Yeah, so glass and water can do really interesting things with the wave lights too. Awesome. All right. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the laser diffraction activity. Um, up next, our friends over at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory are going to take us on a guided tour of the advanced light source. So I'm going to hand it over to Dula from Lawrence Berkeley National Labs, and he's going to tell you all about it. All right. So yeah, my name is Dula, and I am a scientist at Berkeley Lab. And I'm going to share my screen. And so you guys have been talking about light. And I think you guys know that, uh, as you talked about before, there's different wavelengths of light. So you guys have a, we're playing with a diffraction grating that had 13,500 lines per inch. That might sound like a lot, but what if you wanted to, instead of study a grating, what if you wanted to study molecules and proteins and atoms? Well, 
Then if you had a bunch of atoms in a row, you're talking about billions of atoms per inch instead of just 13,000 per inch. So when you want to look at the structure of an atom, you, like it's not enough to use visible light. The wavelength of visible light is too long to be able to study individual atoms and their structure. You need to start using X-rays because X-rays have much shorter wavelengths and you're able to study the structure of those small atoms. So why would you wanna do that? Well, has anybody seen this kind of picture before? Can you put it in the chat if you have any idea what this might be? Yeah. You guys got it. It's, it's, it's a picture of COVID. And what they're showing here is the structure of the proteins on COVID. And do you know how they found this? Do you know how they made this picture? They used x-rays to find the structure of the individual atoms that make up COVID. So they know exactly how all the atoms that make up all these structures are. And that's how they made these pictures. So they needed to come do x-ray experiments. And they did the exact same thing that you guys did. They took a bunch of COVID, they shined x-rays at it, and they got a bunch of spots on a detector. There are a lot of different spots and they were able to do a bunch of math and then transform those spots into this picture that you have right now. So the um, what you were hearing about before, about how you can take those spots and measure the distance between the spots and figure out what the grading looks like, that's what they can do with proteins too. They can take the spots that they get from the x-rays and then they can figure out what the structure of the protein is. So um, to be able to do this kind of experiment, you need, just like you can't just do this with a flashlight, you had to have a laser. We have a special X-ray source at Berkeley Lab called the Advanced Light Source that produces extremely intense X-ray beams. So I'm going to um, stop sharing that and I'm going to just show you a little bit where the advanced light source is, and then you guys can explore this later. So if you guys go to Google Maps, um, let's see, and then just start like zooming in. So here we're, we are in Berkeley. And then if you go, here's the University of California, Berkeley. And if you just go to the right, and you can't really tell from this map, but it's really steep uphill from like here up to here. It's really steep. So we're just going to zoom in and there's this place called the advanced light source. And if you drag this little street view guy over here, you can drop this street view guy and you can, we've actually scanned the inside of the advanced light source. And now you can walk around the hallways of the advanced light source. And this is you know, one of, so the hallway, and you can sort of see, this is one of the scientific instruments. Does that sort of look sciencey to you? I guess. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it there. The, um, and you guys can, you know, hopefully some sometime when you want, explore around in the ALS. But now I'm gonna go back to my other presentation. So just to tell you a little bit about what the ALS does. So the ALS is a particle accelerator. It's an electron accelerator. You start off with a linear accelerator and you accelerate electrons over this short distance to close to the speed of light. Then you use a booster ring to accelerate the electrons even further. And then, oh, hold on, I gotta go back. And then you put them into a what's called the storage ring. And in the storage ring, the electrons go through magnets and the electrons go through these magnetic fields and the magnetic fields cause the electrons to oscillate back and forth. And that produces extremely intense X-ray beams. And so you've got this particle accelerator that accelerates electrons with the purpose of creating super, super intense X-ray beams. And that's what the advanced light source is. And we have, you can see it's sort of a big circle. And what that lets us do is produce a whole bunch of different X-ray beams in different directions. So we have about, 40 different instruments called beam lines. So each time an X-ray goes down a place, it, we call it a beam line. So we, there's 40 different X-ray beam lines that are operating simultaneously where we do experiments. And um, the cool thing about the X-rays at, at the advanced light source is, whereas like a light bulb or an X-ray tube or the sun has a certain level of brightness, 
the x-rays produced from the ALS are between a million and a billion times brighter than the sun. So we've got like really, really bright x-rays. And at the, I'm one of the scientists at one of the beam lines. And at my beam line, if you were to go put a person in there, you would get a lethal dose of x-rays in about a nanosecond. So you don't want to do that. So we have a lot of lead and concrete shielding to make it safe. And we put the samples inside with the x-rays behind a bunch of lead and stuff like that to make sure we don't get um, an x-ray dose. But um, so like I said, one of the things you can do is call, we call it protein crystallography. You have a crystal made out of a bunch of proteins. You shine the x-rays at it and you get a diffraction pattern. So this is actually a picture of a diffraction pattern. You see all these spots and you're able to find from that the electron density map, which tells you the atomic model of the protein. So that's one of the things we spend a lot of time doing at the advanced light source, but that's not my specialty. So I just wanted to spend a few minutes telling you about what I specialize in, which is imaging much larger things. So I image things the size of a Lego guy. So in the experiment that I do, we put the um, samples in and we take X-ray images of them as we rotate the sample around. So we're able to get a three-dimensional view of the sample. And then we're able to get a three-dimensional reconstruction of the sample and be able to digitally slice it. So we can look inside of things without having to cut them open. We just digitally cut them open by using the X-ray images. So the kinds of things we image are in this picture. So we image, um, this is a piece of a jet engine. It's called the ceramic matrix composite. And we heated it up to over a thousand degrees while we were pulling it apart so we could image the damage because they're trying to make um, newer materials that will survive higher um, heat loads. This top right one is um, some people who are trying to understand how fracking works and what does fracking do under the ground. So there's a lot of questions about, okay, if you're doing fracking, how does that affect the rocks around there? So they did an experiment where they brought shale rock that was used um, in an oil field and they put sand grains in it and they did basically a simulated fracking while we were x-raying the rocks to sort of understand how it works. This bottom right movie is a piece of a grapevine. And so we had some researchers from the University of California, Davis, who were studying how certain um, varieties of grapevines are more drought resistant than others. And so we were able to image the stems and vessels inside the, these um, grape plants to understand how the different varieties were different from each other. And then this bottom left one, these are the fibers from a heat shield material from the Mars lander. So we were studying the heat shield that protects um, when, when vehicles go to space and they have to re-enter the atmosphere, they can get very hot. So they use heat shields. We were studying the heat shield that's used on the Mars lander because they're developing new versions of it that are more lightweight and more protective. So those are just examples of the, some of the kinds of things we image with x-rays to be able to look inside them and see what's happening. And let's see. So the last thing I wanted to say is the, the ALS, so that's where I work, the advanced light source, is it's what we call a user facility. That means it's not just for us, the scientists who work there, to do experiments. We have people come from all over the world to do experiments with their x-ray beams. So if you want to scan something, you should send us a proposal. So I've had middle schoolers who have actually um, sent proposals to me to scan things. And these are some of the things the middle schoolers scan. They scan eggshells, they scan mentos before and after Diet Coke treatment, and they scan butterfly wings. They scan a whole bunch of other things as well um, that I didn't have room to put on. But if you are interested in trying an x-ray scan of something sometime, you guys should definitely reach out because the ALS is a user facility. And we love working with people who will do have great ideas to do new experiments and do interesting science. So with that, I'll say thanks. Wow, thank you so much, Dula. That was amazing. Um, I agree with a lot of the people in the chat who are saying that this is really cool to look at and really fun to learn about. So thank you so much. Um, yeah. So it looks like there's a question. So someone asked about Fahrenheit or Celsius. We um, heated it up to over a thousand degrees Celsius. Um, yeah. I thought there... I saw another question about mm -hmm. the. I think the grapevine. They were wondering if the the grapevine died. If it died. 
So the grapevine, so if we image, um, when we imaged the grapevine, it actually did not die. It was slightly damaged, but it didn't die. We, the plants were still living a few months after. Um, wow. But we have to be careful because there definitely is radiation damage that happens when we image biological things. Great, thank you so much. It's so cool to get to see the types of science that are going on right here in the East Bay using the power of light. Um, all right, if you guys have any more, if you if there's no more questions, we're gonna take a short four minute break um, and we're gonna play a song for you guys so you can take a little break to dance and stretch. And in the meantime, we're gonna ask the adults in the audience to please answer another set of poll questions for us. So we will get a, a fun video going for you guys and a poll question shortly. You guys can feel free to mess around with your lasers as well. Radiation awesome makes Travels through our earth and waves Each wave is a different size Most can be seen with the human eye Wavelength it measures Length of a wave in meters Frequencies waves per second Different wavelengths span the whole spectrum that The longest of all of the waves in line The radio waves are like data radio satellite Next to higher frequency microwaves More energy cooking food with the phone calling Infrared is detected by heat from our bodies Heat sensing our eyes can't see But next in the spectrum is feeling more light Colored light, colored light Of all the different types of radiation Wave length in 90 to 700 nm Spanning the colors like an orgy bit Visible light frequency For 30 to 790 TAC Red, orange, yellow, and green Blue, indigo, violet, all these colors we can see them Left of the visible light, the ultraviolet light UV summer needs some light next time The next rays penetrate through mild and soft tissues Doctors use to see bones inside you Most dangerous waves are gamma rays The short waves, our frequency, energy Our atmosphere of our stops is rays from our absorbing, protecting and whoa, radiation in the spectrum zone on four. Like the ultraviolet ray, X ray, gamma rays, UV, need sunscreen, X rays can see through skin, gamma ray, most energy. These radiations in the spectrum are hot. All right, I hope everybody liked that song. I know I was dancing along over here. Um, all right, and thanks for taking that second poll. So for our next activity, we are going to make some light up greeting cards. So for this activity, you guys are gonna need this um, card stock with a picture of the advanced light source on it. You will need this copper tape that is should be in your kits. 
you will need a uh, little battery. Um, you're going to need this LED light. And you can use the binder clip as well. So everybody got their materials ready for this next hands-on activity? OK, so the first step is going to be to put the copper tape um, onto the card. And when you guys do this, um, be super careful. Try not to rip the copper tape. All right, we need this. We're going to make this circuit. All right, so the way that we're going to make this greeting card light up is by making a circuit of electricity. And we're going to put our light bulb in this circuit to make some electromagnetic waves, which are light. So we need our circuit to be one continuous circuit, which means that we can't have any rips in the tape. So try to be super careful to not rip the copper tape. And you guys are going to put the copper tape in two continuous lines. One line is going to go around here, and the other one is going to go around here. So I'm going to do it and see if you guys can follow along with me. So peel this copper tape super carefully and put it down along the lines here. So when you do the corners, you can just fold the tape over. Or if you want to rip it and tape it down, just make sure that, they, that the corners touch each other and there's no gaps because the electric current is gonna need to go through it. So it should be one continuous line. And then we're gonna make a break here. You can rip the copper tape. And this is where we're gonna put the light bulb. So make a little gap. We wanna make sure there's a nice gap there that our bulb is going to span. And then we're gonna do the other side, get some copper tape on this little leg of our circuit as well. So this half of the circuit is gonna connect the negative end of our light bulb to the negative end of our battery. And this side is going to connect the positive end of the light bulb to the positive end of the battery. And that's how we're going to make this circuit. So if you guys, does, does everybody have some copper tape on their paper like this? If you're having trouble getting the copper tape to stick, then you can... Um, try uh, pressing it down, but it's okay if it doesn't stick to the actual paper as long as it's one continuous piece. All right, so for step two, we're gonna find our little LED light bulb, this little guy. All right, okay, I'm gonna wait for you guys to finish up taping the copper down and while we wait, we can talk about these LED light bulbs. So this is a what's called a light emitting diode. This is LED. And what happens when an electrical current goes through here is it creates these electromagnetic waves that are going to turn into our light. OK, so some people are finishing up. So when you if you have your light bulb, you should have one side. Um, one of the sides should be a little bit longer than the other side. The longer end is gonna be the positive end of your light bulb. So we're gonna bend these two little wires out to the sides at a 90 degree angle so that it looks like this. So once you bend your light bulb, you can place it on your card so that the positive end goes on the plus sign and the negative end goes on the, on the minus sign. And if you have some regular tape, you can tape it down with regular tape. If you don't have regular tape, you can use 
the extra copper wire and you can just get it. Make sure that the there's a nice um, strong connection between the copper of the wire and the metal of your light bulb. So, and also make sure that there is a gap. See how there's a gap in the copper here where the light bulb is inserted? If there's copper touching, then what's going to happen is that the current is just going to go through the copper and it's not going to bother going through the light bulb. So you want to make sure that the only place that the electrical current has to go is right through your light bulb. The positive end of the light bulb is going to be the side that has a slightly longer metal part. But it's okay if you can't figure out which side is positive and which side is negative, because you can always switch up the side of the battery. So don't worry too much about that. Does everybody have their light bulb in place? All right. So if you guys need help with your light bulb, you can... Um, you can also use regular tape here that might make it um, stick a little better, but it looks like a lot of people have their light bulbs on. So the next step is going to be to take the battery. So we've got this battery. And this battery is going to finish up our circuit. So right now we have almost a complete circle. So we have this part that goes through the light bulb and then the circle ends here. So we're going to close off our circuit with our battery. And this battery has a plus side that has a little plus sign on it. And it has a minus sign that doesn't have a plus sign. The light bulb is super small. So you might um, might maybe like dump out the the um, your kit and see if it's trapped in there where you can't find it. Okay, so if you have your battery, put the minus side right onto the wire here, the copper tape, and then you can take the other side of your copper tape and touch it against the battery. And it should make your little LED light up. And this is because this battery, it stores potential energy. So, um, you've got potential uh, electrical energy stored in the battery. And when we put it into a circuit, that potential energy causes an electrical current to go through the copper wire. So when the electrical current goes through the wire and it comes up to our light bulb, the current goes through the bulb and it makes a light. What color is everybody's light? My, my light is kind of a purpley pink. I see someone has a green light. Some people have green lights too. If your um, circuit isn't working, there's a couple things you can check. Oh, some people have red and white. Okay, there's a couple things you can check if your circuit isn't working. Make sure that there are no breaks in your copper wire. If you have a break in your circuit, here, I'll show you what happens. If you have a break in your circuit, your light's gonna go off, all right? But if you just tape that back together with some copper, you can repair that break, get the circuit going again. You can fix it like that. Um, the other thing you might try is you might have the battery flip the wrong direction. If you have the battery flipped the wrong direction, it won't work. But if you have it flipped the other way, then it'll light up. So try just flipping your battery over. That might be the issue. Um, and then the other thing to make sure is that there's no copper here. If you have a continuous copper piece here, your light is not gonna light up either. But let me see in the chat, Tell me what color your light is if you're getting it to work. Some people have orange, some people have yellow, some people have blue. So cool. If you flip it around, you can see it lights up the top of the advanced light source too. 
And you can keep, you can put your binder clip here to keep your um, battery in place too. So you can use your binder clip to attach it so you don't have to hold it. Awesome. All right. And then the other thing you can do is you can look through your diffraction grating and look at your, you can look at your card through your diffraction grating and see what the rainbows look like. And if you compare your card to the flashlight, when you look through the grating, you might be able to notice a difference because these lights are colored, which means that they don't have the entire spectrum of light in them. So my rainbow, it looks like it has a little gap in the spectrum around the green area. Um, and that's because the light is pink. So there's less of the green frequencies in there. And that's why, that's why it looks that color. So try, try looking through your light bulb or try looking through your diffraction greeting at your greeting card and see what the rainbows look like. See if they're different from the rainbows you get from your flashlight. Because it's not quite the same wavelengths of light that are in here as are in the flashlight. All right. I think that's all for this activity. That was super fun. I hope you guys also had fun. It seems like a lot of people got theirs um, lit up. If you still are working on getting yours um, to light up, that's okay too. Sometimes science takes a long time. We gotta do trial and error. You just gotta keep working at it. That's how it goes. Okay. So we're getting close to the end of the night. We're gonna launch our final set of questions for you guys to answer um, before we get on to the raffle prizes. So adults, again, please help us out um, by answering this last set of poll questions for us. Um, um, and then press submit when you, when you are finished um, with the answering the poll questions. Um, let's see. Did anybody look at their card? Uh, anybody look at their LED light of their card through their diffraction grading and notice any gaps in their rainbow spectrum? Oh, somebody used aluminum foil instead of copper. That's that's a great idea. You guys can try that out too. Awesome. Okay. So if you are finished with the poll, um, I think we are ready to move on to the raffle. Thank you guys so much for filling out these polls. Scientific Adventures has been working super hard throughout this year to host a variety of virtual family science nights um, for you and your family to enjoy. And your feedback is super helpful for us to find ways to improve for the next event. So we really appreciate you filling out those polls for us. And now I think it's raffle time. So we have some super awesome prizes for the winners of the raffle tonight. Um, if you don't win this time, you can always try again at the next Family Science Night. We're going to be doing raffles at the end of every all of our virtual events. So we're going to announce three winners. Um, and it's going to be based on the name of the person who registered. So if your name is called as a winner of the raffle you can send a private message in the ju in the in the chat to panelists only um, so don't send it to everyone send it to panelists only uh, with your name and your email if you are a raffle winner and we're going to follow up with you about how you can collect your prizes so we're getting the raffle winners going. The wheel is turning. We're gonna see who our first winner is. All right, congratulations to our first raffle winner. So you can send a private message to the panelists only uh, with your name and email. And we can follow up with you guys. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for this Learning with Light event. 
Uh, and congratulations to the next raffle winner. Again, send a chat to the panelists with your name and email so we can follow up with you. It's our last winner. Here we go. Who's it going to be? Yay, congratulations. All right, we've got our three winners. So um, yeah, send a, send a message to just the panelists with your name and email. Um, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. I had a great time. I hope you all had a great time. Thank you so much to Lawrence Berkeley National Labs for collaborating with us to put on this exciting event. Um, feel free to check us out on our social media pages. We got Facebook, Instagram, and our Scientific Adventures for Girls website. Um, and we're gonna be posting about future family science nights on there. So please follow along as we continue to bring you fun science events to your home. And we're gonna put up a recording of today's session um, to our YouTube channel. So Scientific Adventures for Girls YouTube is gonna have a recording of this session um, so you guys can watch it again, if you like. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great night.